to matters environmental now, and for over two decades, residents of Marigoini in Waidaka here in Nairobi have not had running tap water. The residents resorted to digging shallow wells to meet some of their water needs and are hopeful that their taps will run again soon. But what will it take to revive their water supply? On Echo Journal tonight, Rita Tinina reports on why experts insist that sustainable water development in cities and towns has to start with conservation of water catchment areas. In Marigoine Waidaka on the outskirts of Nairobi, Wanjirongu Raya fetches water from her shallow well. But the water she fetches from this well does not meet her most crucial water needs. For drinking water, Wanjiro and many other residents of Marigoine turn to such water kiosks. This is the story of many residents of Marigoini, but it has not always been like this. At least it wasn't until the 80s. Since then, running tap water has remained a pipe dream. Quite literally. The rusty old taps perhaps illustrate how elusive the life saving commodity has been in Marigoini. A few years after the taps ran dry, residents found ways of trying to solve the water problem. Shallow wells are a feature in many homes in Marigoini, but there is a problem. Most of the wells have been dug near pit latrines. These wells that they rely for water supply are being polluted or contaminated by these pit latrines. While some residents depend on kiosks for water to drink and cook, for others, the seven shillings for 20 liters of water is way out of reach. Solomon Kimani depends on this well for all his water needs, including drinking, contamination issues aside. But even the wells are now not providing as much water as they used to for residents here. With the taps dry for years and with the supply from the wells dwindling by the day, one thing has remained constant for residents here. They are keeping hope alive that one day the taps will run again. Through sensitization by the Water and Livelihoods Network, the affected residents have formed a water committee. The residents of Marigoine are among the estimated 40% of Nairobi residents who do not have access to piped water. According to experts, it may not entirely be the Nairobi Water Company to blame. All the way from government policy to intervention by NGOs like ourselves and other development partners, what has been seen from a commodity end. And there has been a missing link on who cares and supports the catchment aspect of it. And for the residents of Marigoine to have their taps running again, the journey experts insist will have to start in the forests and water catchment areas. Even if you have the most efficient piping system across the whole country, but there is no source of the water. That's a, a development that will be misplaced. Nairobi gets its water mainly from two sources. The Nakaine Dam in Thika, which provides 80% of the city's water supply, and the Sasumua Dam, which accounts for about 14% of the city's water needs. Both dams largely depend on the Abadea Ranges as their catchment. The Abadeas at one time faced serious threat, but conservation efforts, including the fencing of the Abadeas, have since helped to conserve the city's water reservoir. The highlands and the forest will continue to be reservoirs for water, and therefore any development that gets to bring the water close to the people 
is assured of a continuous flow of the same. Until their taps run dry, many city residents give little thought to where exactly their water comes from. With degradation of catchment areas and changing weather patterns, Kenya's water sources are under pressure and it will take much more than just paying the water bills to get the taps running again. Rita Tinina, KTN.